Back on Sports Pit, Paulie and Teddy at Paulie Howard on Twitter and Teddy underscore covers. Time for the deep dive. Super Bowl 52, Sunday, February 4th, 2018, U.S. Bank Stadium, Minneapolis. And the odds came out after Super Bowl 51. Now listen, if you the tourists love to bet this stuff because they're rarely in town and they want to have some interest in action while they're in Vegas. But this is this is something for a, a local. These are tough to bet. Before the draft and especially free agency? No thanks. Well, yeah. I mean, this is for discussion purposes only. Have I taken any money out of my wallet to bet any of these? I have not. Do I expect to take any money out of my wallet to bet any of these in the near future? I do not. It is worth noting, as you mentioned, though, uh, the original odd, the very first odds came up back in January. And since that time, they were, they, they were reposted after the Super Bowl. They moved the odds down on 19 of the 32 teams. Shorter odds. They didn't move the odds up on any of them. So it just tells you how tough this market is. And the Westgate Superbook, these are the good guys. Jay Cornegay, literally, they're the good guys in Las Vegas. Their whole percentages are reasonable. Uh, the the amount that they, the propositions and, and the takeout for even these future book wagers are very reasonable compared to most of the sports books in Las Vegas. When the good guys are <laughs> chopping your odds on 19 of the 32 teams, Tells you how tough it is to beat the bad guys. But that being said, Pauly, let's talk about it. we got some numbers to talk about. It's always interesting, even though these aren't teams that we're planning on betting anymore. Yes, believe it or not, I'm starting with the Browns. 300 to 1. They're awful. They're lucky they won a game. But I think they're going to be in the running because they got two top 15. What are they sitting there at number 1 and number 12? I think they could make a trade and get Garoppolo. Now, let's talk about factors that we don't know anything about yet. We don't know anything about the draft. We don't know anything about free agency. We don't have schedules yet. You know, we have a strength of schedule. And the opponents, uh, I believe the 16, we have at least 14 of the 16 opponents already determined. But we don't have a strength of schedule based on season win totals for next year. So we are going with incomplete information. That being said, I know that it's never happened in the history of the NFL where a team goes from 1-15 and 15 to win the Super Bowl. But come on, Paulie, the Browns aren't winning the Super Bowl next year. Cleveland might be a real good bet. I expect them to be lined They can make the playoffs. Half, maybe I'm not saying games. they will, but you can. the Miami Dolphins went from 1-15 and 15 to winning the division. I mean, it can be done, even in that tough division. If they make a trade and get Garoppolo and all those picks, who knows, maybe they get in the playoffs and you got a shot. I'm with you on being bullish on the Browns. I like the Browns. I think there's money to be made with the Browns, potentially, in 2017. But those are the type of bets I don't want Super Bowl futures on. I want week-by-week wagers or over-under win totals. Super Bowl futures I want. I'm looking for teams that have a chance to actually win it all. And let's start with the two that were just in the Super Bowl. We have the Patriots and the Falcons. Any interest in either one of those two teams? Is New England going to go back? Is Atlanta going to go back? New England definitely. I don't think. I don't think Atlanta ever. I don't think Atlanta bounces back. I, I don't think you recover from a loss like that. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm with you on that. In terms of the Patriots, the Patriots are contenders evermore until proven otherwise. You know, we're talking about a team that's gone over their win total what uh, eleven times in the last twelve years. All they do is win the division and have opportunities and find ways to. Uh, whatever. Let's not talk about the Super Bowl. But for Atlanta, now you got Sarkeesian. What do you think of that move? Oh, it's horrible. I couldn't believe that. I mean, Chip Kelly was a layup to me. I mean, the last time we saw this guy, he was showing up to work drunk at USC. Okay. So, well, he and he coached a decent game in the uh, in, in the national championship game. It wasn't Sarkeesian's fault that Alabama's defense fell apart. What I'm looking for when we start talking about NFL futures, I want teams that are live. And let's call it an arbitrary number in the range of 30 or 40 to 1 or higher. That's, if I'm going to actually put my money on something, that's the range I'm looking for. Teams that might end up being pretty good that are still being priced as long shot. There's a handful of them here. Let's talk about the Chicago Bears uh, as a team. Again, we don't know what their quarterback situation is. But when you talk about injury-riddled squads from last year, there's hope for in 2017. The Bears are one of those type of teams. Uh, and I would expect them, uh, again, you're not getting a ridiculous number here, but 100 to 1? What do you think of Chicago, Polly? Are they live in that range? No, no interest. No, I don't want any part of Chicago. Now, I do want a piece of the Texans because Peter King thinks the Texans are going to cut Osweiler and eat the money and just say, that's it. You can't play. We're done. 
Now that could be a landing spot for Romo. And the team that trades for Romo, you become an instant contender. I mean, man, you put Romo on that team, they might have beat the Patriots how good that defense is. Well, that's just it. And of course, they get J.J. Watt back next year as well. So Houston, one quarterback away from not just being a playoff team, but being a legit contender to New England. In the East, let's get a Matthew Stafford pick up there. Oh, no. What do you think about the Lions next year? You want the Lions to win it all, Polly? Never. Stafford's never won a playoff game. I don't want any part of Stafford. I, I, I do think you, there's some value there with the Eagles, though. I think Wentz can make a big step in year two. Yeah, Philadelphia was a team they, they had a... Let's see, I have mixed feelings about the Eagles. Because I knew their schedule was going to be brutal this year. Their schedule is, uh, is going to be as good notch or two easier uh, a year from now. Philly did said so many cheap scores on defense and special teams. It's hard to do that two years in a row. But, boy, there were a lot of positive signs in Philadelphia uh, this year. Uh, and that defense might end up being pretty good. And a good defense can take you uh, a long, long way. Two teams that I got my eye on out of the AFC, Polly. You know, let's uh, talk about them real quick. One, of course... And I'm not convinced Cincinnati's going to get back into it. But if you're looking to take a flyer on someone, you know, Cincy, they've got the quarterback who's been in the postseason. They've got playmakers. They have a defense. What do you think of the Bengals and Marvin Lewis? Uh, absolutely not. No way. Never. Never. He's never, won a, he's never won a playoff game. Either is Andy Dalton. No way I'm betting on Marvin Lewis in a playoff game. Not only is he 0-7 in the playoffs, he's never scored more than, uh, what is it, 8-8, eight, eight, 17 points? Never scored more than 17 points in any of those playoff games. That's embarrassing. Titans? Now, that could be something there. I mean, Mar Mariota played well. They, they almost won the division, just missed out. That could be something. Yeah, and, and one of the things that you want to recognize with the betting markets for NFL futures is that the hot teams are going to take money. And there's two hot teams I want to talk about right at the end right here. We talked about the Tennessee Titans a team that played well last year, has the quarterback, has the running game, has a lot of things that the markets are going to be attracted to, the money on Tennessee is going to come. You can count on it. If you like the Titans, that's one team you might want to bet now as opposed to waiting. The other, of course, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know, Winston and Mariota came into the league together. Why do I feel like they're going to go to their first Super Bowl together at some point? I think that'd be a lot of fun. Maybe it's this year uh, coming up, but the bottom line is Tampa, too, like Tennessee has the makings of an up-and-coming team. They will be attracting betting market support. If you like Tampa, you might want to get involved in a future on them sooner rather than later. Yeah, Dirk Carter did a good job. That, that could that could be live there, too, and also in a tough division. I think Atlanta takes a step back just like Carolina did this season. Hey, guys, for the full video, go to sbrpicks.com. Research before you bet. Be sure to check out SBR Picks for the best game predictions, breakdowns, and much, much more.